A few days ago, China's first reusable Methalox rocket, the Zhuchui-3, lifted off for its highly anticipated test flight. The booster climbed smoothly, but during its return attempt, it broke apart in a dramatic explosion. Since then, many have been asking what happened in the final moments of the mission. Those questions can now be addressed. Landspace has released the complete onboard footage, and the new video offers clear and detailed insight into the sequence of events that led to the failed landing. So why did the Zhuchui-3 booster fail? to touch down successfully? And how significant will SpaceX's influence be on Landspace's next steps as they move forward? Let's explore the answers in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Jujue 3 is a methane and oxygen rocket, a propellant combination that represents one of the most significant technological shifts in the modern aerospace industry. This new generation of Methalox vehicles is designed to offer higher performance, cleaner combustion, and better reusability potential. For that reason, Jujue 3 is often mentioned alongside other major reusable rockets, such as SpaceX's Starship and Blue Origin's New Glenn. After the successful flights of Zhuchui-2, Landspace set an ambitious goal for its next vehicle. They want Zhuchui-3 to reach orbit reliably and also recover its booster for refurbishment and reuse. That objective is the foundation of the current development program, which is why the recent booster landing failure has drawn so much interest. On launch day, the available footage only showed the final descent of the booster. Viewers saw the grid fins deployed, the booster attempting to orient itself, and then a sudden violent explosion. But this left a major question. What happened before that moment? Was there a hidden issue earlier in the flight that contributed to the failed landing attempt? Landspace has now released new onboard footage that captures the critical phases of the mission from multiple perspectives. This video is extremely valuable because onboard cameras provide a controlled close-up view of how a vehicle behaves in flight. Such footage reveals subtle details that are often missed by ground-based cameras, especially during rapid maneuvers or high-altitude operations. The first set of new footage comes from the second stage. In this view, we see the moment the two stages separate. The separation process appears smooth and well executed. Instead of igniting the second stage engine immediately at the moment of separation, Zhuchui 3 seems to use small thrusters to create gentle spacing between the stages. This approach can slightly reduce overall performance, but it avoids sending powerful engine exhaust directly into the forward section of the booster, which prevents thermal damage and structural stress. After a brief pause, the second stage engine ignites cleanly, and we already know the outcome. The second stage reached orbit successfully, which is why Zhuchui-3's debut flight is still considered a partial success. However, the real story is the booster. Fortunately, Landspace equipped the booster with its own onboard camera. In that footage, we see the grid fins deploy as expected. These aerodynamic surfaces allow the booster to steer itself, control its descent path, and reduce speed. The grid fin deployment appears flawless, and the booster maintains stability for a considerable period. Ground footage confirms this behavior showing a glowing plume at the booster's rear that indicates a stable boost back burn. This means the engine was functioning correctly during the early phases of the return sequence. As the booster descends closer to the ground, the grid fins begin to move more aggressively, adjusting the booster's trajectory for a targeted landing. The vehicle transitions from horizontal flight to a vertical orientation. Everything at this point appears consistent with a nominal landing procedure. But the moment the landing burn begins, everything changes. The onboard footage abruptly ends, and the ground footage completes the story. As soon as the engines ignite for the final braking maneuver, a failure occurs almost immediately. This confirms the earlier conclusion that the landing burn was the root cause of the accident. So, what went wrong inside the engine at this decisive moment? Based on the visual evidence, the booster experienced an abnormal combustion event. In aerospace terminology, this is known as a rapid unscheduled disassembly, a catastrophic failure triggered by engine instability. A likely cause is a leak. During the demanding phases of reentry and descent, the engine's plumbing system may have overheated, cracked, or even been compromised. A leak can occur in propellant lines connecting the tanks to the engine. When super cold methane or oxygen escapes under high pressure, it can ignite instantly. The resulting flash fire can spread rapidly throughout the engine bay. The footage supports this theory. Flames appear at the lower end of the booster and intensify quickly. The fire climbs upward as fuel continues 
continues to feed it. Thick, dark smoke forms in the final seconds, indicating that structural components and insulation materials were burning. Once the fire compromised the engine section, the booster lost control authority. It entered freefall without the ability to slow down, leading to the final explosion. These observed issues include ignition instability, fuel flow irregularities, and leaks. Interestingly, these same three categories of failures were recently identified in Blue Origin's New Glenn booster during its own landing attempt. However, there is a difference. New Glenn's ignition issue prevented the engine from restarting, while Zhujue 3's ignition instability appears to have caused a chain reaction that destroyed the entire engine compartment. Even so, expectations remain high for land space. They now have detailed data from this attempt combined with experience gained from Zhuchui 2. These lessons will help guide them toward achieving their first successful booster recovery. Many believe they can accomplish this goal sooner rather than later. So, do you think Landspace will succeed on their next attempt? Let me know with a yes or a no in the comment section down below. Then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to follow the continuing development of SpaceX and the global race toward full reusability. To me, a successful landing on the next attempt is absolutely possible, and there are several encouraging indicators that point in that direction. As mentioned earlier, the final phase of the Zhuchui 3 booster's descent ended in a loss of control. However, when we examine the available imagery after the flight, a clearer picture emerges. It appears that the booster came down very close to the intended landing pad. Even though the vehicle ultimately crashed, the impact zone was located near the approach path to the pad. Later photographs taken after cleanup efforts revealed black, charred debris scattered along the ground. These markings allow us to determine that the crash site was positioned slightly outside the designated landing zone, and unfortunately, it was located along the primary access route to the pad. Although this area would certainly have been cleared of personnel and vehicles during landing operations, the crash likely created temporary complications for ground support systems who had to maneuver equipment around the damaged terrain afterward. However, the key point lies in the booster's proximity to the landing zone. Even though it lost control during the final moments, the booster still reached a location relatively close to where it was supposed to land. This detail reveals something important. It shows that the guidance system had successfully positioned the booster for a precise landing long before the landing burn began. The navigation sequence, the trajectory shaping, the orientation adjustments, and the grid fin work had all been effective. This means that aside from the engine failure during the landing burn, Zhuchui 3's descent profile performed well above expectations. The vehicle was accurately tuned to reach the correct landing corridor before the malfunction occurred. If the engine problem had not developed, we might have witnessed one of the most remarkable first attempt landings in modern rocket development. Because of this, it's reasonable to believe that a successful landing on the next attempt is within reach. Landspace possesses flight data, analysis tools, and now a clear understanding of what went wrong, and these factors will help guide their next steps. But this brings us to a larger question. What role does SpaceX play in Landspace's path forward? At a glance, SpaceX might seem unrelated to the Zhuchui 3 landing failure, but in reality, the connection is extremely significant. Landspace has adopted many design philosophies and engineering approaches that SpaceX pioneered. Their rocket uses stainless steel as a primary structural material, which mirrors Starship. The fuel combination of liquid oxygen and liquid methane also parallels Starship. Meanwhile, the shape, grid fins, and landing leg configuration resemble Falcon 9's operational design. Because so many core elements of Zhuchui 3's architecture were inspired by SpaceX, it's only logical that Landspace will study how SpaceX operates these systems to make improvements to their own vehicles. This means analyzing how SpaceX manages methane flow, engine chill down, ignition sequencing, and thrust vector control on Starship. It means carefully studying how Falcon 9 adjusts its grid fins, controls its descent trajectory, initiates entry and landing burns, and deploys landing legs. By comparing that knowledge with their own data, Landspace can refine their approach to solving the problems seen in their booster recovery attempt. The distinction is important because copying external appearances alone is not enough. Without understanding the technologies, behaviors, and failure modes beneath the surface, a vehicle cannot achieve
achieve reliable, repeatable performance. Many startups have attempted to imitate SpaceX without truly understanding what makes their systems work, and as a result, they struggle repeatedly. If LandSpace intends to succeed, they must focus on learning the underlying engineering, not merely replicating the outward features. But beyond direct design inspiration, LandSpace will inevitably learn from SpaceX's broader operational experience. SpaceX is the undisputed pioneer and leader in booster recovery. They have executed landings on concrete pads, autonomous drone ships, and now are moving toward catching vehicles with Mechazilla arms. Their boosters have achieved hundreds of reuses. They have dealt with every failure scenario imaginable, corrected their mistakes, and refined their processes. These accumulated lessons are invaluable to any company attempting to enter the field of rocket reusability. Some may question whether encouraging a Chinese company to study SpaceX is equivalent to helping them catch up to SpaceX. But the truth is that SpaceX encourages this learning by being the most open aerospace company in the world. Their tests, launches, failures, and victories are publicly shared in real time on platforms such as X. They do not hide their technological progress which suggests that they are not concerned about competitors imitating them. In fact, by being so open, SpaceX ensures that its competitors improve, which forces SpaceX to keep innovating. This constant cycle of improvement prevents stagnation. Catching up would only be possible if SpaceX stopped developing, but they do not stop. They continue to innovate at a pace that is unmatched. As companies like Landspace attempt to follow in their footsteps, SpaceX simultaneously moves on to new frontiers, such as catching Starship and Super Heavy with mechanical arms, deploying payloads at a scale that no other company can match, and pursuing full and rapid reusability at a level that has never before been achieved. For this reason, Landspace's progress should not be seen as a threat to SpaceX's leadership. Instead, it is a sign that SpaceX's influence is reshaping the global landscape of rocketry. Every competitor that improves validates SpaceX's SpaceX's methods and confirms the gap between them. With that in mind, Zhu Chui-3's performance still reflects a significant achievement for China's reusable Methalox program. Although the landing attempt was not fully successful, the flight data, onboard footage, and observed precision in guidance provide strong reasons for optimism. China now has a platform which it can refine, improve, and ultimately succeed in bringing booster reusability into its space program. At the same time, SpaceX is accelerating toward its own milestones. Early next year, Starship aims to reach orbit reliably, deploy real payloads, and attempt full-stage recovery using Mechazilla. With these capabilities, combined with its enormous scale, Starship will remain far ahead of all Methalox competitors, including Zhu 3 regardless of how quickly they improve. We are witnessing the emergence of a new class of rockets powered by methane and oxygen. It's an exciting competitive field. Starship, Zhu 3 New Glenn, Neutron, and several other contenders are stepping into a race that will define the next era of spaceflight. So in this rapidly advancing landscape, which rocket will you place your confidence in? Share your answer boldly in the comment section down below. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.